Hello and welcome back to 88 Angel Street. As you can see, things are moving along here and the roof is on. Very exciting times. It's starting to look a little bit more like this. Now today, as well as sharing some of the latest technical innovations with you, I'd also like to introduce you to the architectural side of the project. The quality of space we're creating here. The way the design is going to work and feel. So here's the roof you could see from the street, covered in plants as it will be, with the three bedroom dormers popping out. I'd like to give you just a brief introduction to the way the houses are laid out. So the front door is on the other side of the garage shown here. The garage is designed to be turned into a fourth bedroom very easily for people who don't have cars. Past the laundry to the central atrium with a floating staircase over a pond with a retractable glass roof and shade louvers over the top. The light comes down into the centre of the house and it bounces off the pond up into the living area and also creates what's called a stack effect. So this is the kitchen, dining and living space spilling out onto the backyard here. In summer, everyone knows hot air rises. The way these houses are designed, cold, cooler air will be drawn in to the house from the garden and the hot air will rise up the atrium out of the tractable roof which can be kept open but shaded. In winter, this can all be closed down and the glass door closed at this level to retain heat in the living area. So we're really trying to get the best of both worlds in summer and winter just through little design features. And here we are in the atrium. This is where the retractable glass roof will be and you can see how much light it's going to shoot right down into the middle of the house. With the pond down there, the reflections from the pond, it's really going to light up the interior of the living space. So you can imagine how the stack effect we mentioned is going to work, drawing the cooler air into the lower levels of the house as the warmer air rises up and out of the retractable roof when it's open, making this effectively an internal courtyard right in the middle of the house. Now we're going to have a look at the master bedroom and how that works. Welcome to our lovely, generous master bedroom. Now we've got east-facing high-level glazing here, which is going to let winter sun in, but have louvers to shade summer sun out. We've got our west-facing balcony opening up to the lovely leafy street vista. And having these two openings opposite each other on, in the room is going to create cross ventilation which will capture nice cooling breezes. As we talked about with the stack effect in the atrium, we've applied the same principles to the bedrooms. Now I'm sure you're all familiar with the very common problem of upper level bedrooms getting too hot in summer and too cold in winter. So what we've done to make sure that doesn't happen is we've got direct exposure of every bedroom to this big lovely thermal mass wall of the concrete which we talked about before. Now that's going to suck the excess heat out of the air and store it in the concrete until it gets cold at, cold at night or cooler at night and then it releases it and the breeze will take it out of the room, cooling it down again in preparation for the next morning. But thermal mass isn't nearly as effective without good insulation. And if you want insulation, have a look at that. This is 200 millimetres of high performance insulation foam sandwiched between two metal sheets to create a structural insulated roof panel. Now I'm sure you're all familiar with how effective 30 mil of insulation foam is in an esky at keeping your ice frozen and your drinks cold. So imagine how effective around five times that thickness is going to be in this bedroom. Should keep the beer on the bedside table cold for at least an hour or two. Now you might remember from the retaining wall episode how we refined the structure to maximise the space in these houses. We've done the same thing up here with the roof. Now this insulated structural panel with the weight of the green roof that's going to go on top of it can't span the full five metres we've got here. So it needs a mid-span beam to break that up. Now I didn't want to drop that into the room and either lower the whole ceiling height or have an unsightly bulkhead coming across the room. So we designed and engineered a brand new way of installing these panels, which is to cut a recess into the back of the panel, leaving the top sheet intact for weatherproofing and recess the beam in so that as you can see, it's virtually flat with the lower line of the panel 
and doesn't impinge on the space. Now it was more work to put it in, but worth it. Now this is without doubt the most exciting thing that has happened on the project so far, the green roof. Now this has been alive for about four months now and I put it through a very rigorous testing program of leaving it with my brother to look after for three of those four months. So it's undergone very stringent quality control testing. Now the way it's going to be built is this is the insulated panel we've looked at. On top of that even though it's inherently waterproof and will be weather tight there's also a waterproofing membrane over the top. Then we've got this fully recyclable drainage cell which traps moisture for the plants to absorb. Geotech fabric over the top to stop the drain cell getting growing medium or soil in it and to help wick the moisture up to the roots of the plants. And then if I turn it around, you can see that this is again a fully recyclable plastic expandable mesh which forms a matrix for the growing medium or the soil to be restrained in so the plants don't slide down the roof. Now let me put an end to any rumours right now that this is going to be a grass roof. It is not going to be a grass roof. Would you want to mow this? I don't think so. These plants have all been specially selected as native endemic ground cover, low water requirements, low fertilisation requirements evolved over millions of years to survive in exactly these climatic conditions and they are so hardy that they will require maintenance once established only four times a year. Thanks very much for joining us again at Angel Street. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I can't wait to show you the cool things we've got coming up next time, including an ancient Japanese building technique involving a flamethrower. See you then.